Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Before the break, uh, we saw that uh, the relationship between stability analysis and feedback control is very interesting. So, feedback control uh, we typically use uh, to uh, have a disturbance rejection and it is our idea that when we implement a control system, it will be able to reject that disturbance or it will allow us uh, the ability to move the system from one point to the other. But uh, we saw uh, through that example of 3 CSTR that uh, the, the feedback control also has a tendency that if you use the wrong value of controller parameter, it can actually destabilize an originally stable system. So it is very important that you know what are the bounds up to which you can vary the controller parameters and that will be possible by doing stability analysis of a feedback system. So this stability analysis can be done uh, using uh, Laplace domain analysis or frequency domain analysis. So we will start with the Laplace domain analysis because already we have studied the transfer function in the Laplace domain for a feedback system. So let us see how we can use that information to assess stability of a feedback system. So uh, in week 3 uh, we had uh, seen uh, what do we mean by poles or zeros of a system and that time we had uh, made a comment that if all the poles of the system lie on the left half plane of the complex plane then the system remains stable in the sense that the system uh, has decaying oscillations or it decaying exponential so that the system goes back to the original point or the deviations are uh, limited system does not grow out of proportions as against if the poles are on the right half plane or any of the poles is on the right half plane the system either has growing oscillations or a growing exponential and eventually the system will go towards instability. So in terms of stability so if we are doing Laplace domain stability analysis. The key feature which we are going to use is if all poles of the system, it may be open system or a closed loop system are in left half plane, the system is stable or a correct uh, more uh, improved uh, definition can be that if any pole of the system is in right half plane, the system is unstable. Because this particular statement uh, does not include if the poles are on the imaginary axis in which case the system has sustained oscillation and when the system has sustained oscillation uh, the system kind of uh, remains marginally stable because the system oscillates around the steady state. It is not uh, going too far away from the steady state because we can always say that the bound is uh, same as the amplitude of the oscillation. And because of that these systems are stable if you include the imaginary axis system becomes marginally stable except uh, if the pole is at origin uh, which is uh, an integrator and an unstable process. So a more correct definition would be if any pole of the system is in the right half plane the system is unstable. So all we are interested uh, in terms of assessing the stability analysis uh, doing stability analysis in the Laplace domain is to find a pole 
and see if all the poles, uh, if any of the pole lies on the right half plane. And if you recall, uh, how do we get poles of the system? So, poles are the solution of an equation ds equal to 0. This also we known as a, it's also known as a characteristic equation. So, we write the transfer function of the system. So, if g s is the transfer function, we write it as n s over d s and we take the denominator polynomial equal to 0 and the roots of that polynomial will tell us the poles and depending on the pole, we will know what is whether the system is stable or unstable. So, same logic uh, we will be using in order to assess the stability of a feedback system. So, when we were talking about a feedback system, we have already derived these transfer functions uh, in servo or regulatory mode. So, if we are talking about feedback system, then in the regulatory mode, the transfer function we had derived was G D over 1 plus G P, G C, G V, G M. In the servo mode, it is G P, G V, G C over 1 plus G P, G C, G V, G M. And here if, uh, we will at least start uh, with the fact uh, that uh, G D is stable or G P is inherently stable. So, if that is the case uh, or we just need to make an assumption that this disturbance transfer function is stable. So, it is not going to add any unstable pole uh, into the characteristic equation. If that is the case, so, so G D is stable that is poles are in the left half plane. Then this transfer function is already in N s over D s form and the characteristic equation becomes 1 plus G P G C G V G M equal to 0 which is same for regulatory or servo. So, this is the equation uh, which we have to monitor uh, which also has G C in it which will be a function of controller parameters. So, using this equation uh, we would be able to find out whether the system is stable or unstable. So, let us now try to find out the characteristic equation uh, for the 3 CSTR system which we had just seen. So, for the 3 CSTR system, we had the process transfer function as 1 over 8 s plus 1 cube. We have used a proportional controller, so GC is equal to KC and we can assume that the measurement dynamics are instantaneous, uh, they are reliable and we can also consider the wall transfer function to be 1 and in that case, uh, the characteristic equation becomes one plus G P G C G V G M equal to zero, it means one plus one over eight S plus one cube K C one and one equal to zero, uh, which you can simplify and get it will be S cube plus three S square plus three S plus 1 plus k c over 8 equal to 0. So, this is our characteristic equation. So, you can see that the characteristic equation includes this controller parameter. So, the poles are function of the controller gain. So, that is how uh, the controller gain has an effect on the stability or unstability of this system 
so all the poles uh, some of the poles of this system would depend on the controller gain so now uh, here we see a point that we have reached a cubic equation which will have three poles and we will have to solve this analytically for different values of kc in order to assess uh, whether that particular kc value is stable or unstable so the laplace domain analysis can become tricky and uh, numerically time consuming so in order to simplify this especially the the techniques uh, were developed almost about a century ago when the digital computer were, computers uh, were not uh, there to assist in terms of finding the numerical solution or in general all the analytical solutions of this kind of higher order polynomial systems so uh, the the researchers at that time came up with simplified methods in order to assess uh, the stability or what we are interested in this particular system is that uh, all we are interested in to know that the poles uh, of this system do not lie in the right half plane so as long as we can ascertain that irrespective of the value of the pole of the system we can tell whether the system is stable or unstable so in summary we are just interested in finding out uh, what is the typical range or whether the poles lie on the uh, right half plane or the left half plane so in order to do that there is a simple method uh, which was uh, there is a simple condition uh, set of conditions which were developed about a century ago by two scientists known as ruth uh, by the name ruth and hurwitz so we'll see how what is that method and how it can be applicable here so that avoids us uh, that eliminates the need uh, to solve these uh, polynomial uh, systems uh, in order to assess stability so these are two conditions uh, uh, which uh, will us help us in terms of uh, deciding whether the closed loop system is going to be stable or unstable so the first condition is a necessary condition for stability so this has to be satisfied and this was given by hurwitz and uh, these conditions are defined uh, for a characteristic equation of the form a n s raised to n so nth order polynomial in s where a n is greater than 0 or a n is positive so uh, for a characteristic equation of this particular form the necessary it is in order for the system to be stable the necessary condition is that all these ais are positive so all this a1 a2 all the way up to an all these should be positive then only the system can be stable if any of those are negative the system will be unstable and if any of those are zero then this condition can uh, this particular analysis of the ruth hurwitz criteria cannot be used in that particular system the system may be stable the system may be unstable and let us say if all these coefficients are positive which most of the times would be the case then we need a sufficient condition for stability which was given by ruth and that condition is all the entries in the first column of the so called ruth array are positive so in order to apply this sufficient condition for stability we have to compute something known as a ruth array 
So, we will see uh, how to construct a root array for any um, characteristic equation of this form. we have a n is raised to n uh, so the root array um, the first row of the root array uh, will designated by r1 it will include all the alternate coefficients of this polynomial equation in s starting with the highest power. So, we will start with a n. So, the first row will include a n and then all the alternate entries from that. So, after a n it will be the entry with s raise to n minus 2, then it is raise to n minus 4 and all the way up to whether it will be a n a 1 or a 0. And the second row will be the remaining coefficients. So, we will start with a n minus 1, a n minus 3, a n minus 5 all the way up to a 1 or a 0 depending on n is even or odd. So, all the coefficients inside this uh, characteristic equation are represented in the two rows by taking the alternate coefficients. And depending on the order of this particular characteristic equation, we will have multiple columns. This is column 1, 2, 3 all the way up to let us say n minus n by 2 column. <coughs> and uh, the, if you go back to the condition in of root, it says all the entries in the first column of the root array are positive. So, even though we are constructing this entire matrix of multiple rows and columns, in the end we are going to be interested only in this column 1. So, we have populated uh, the two rows uh, of this root array uh, by using the coefficients of uh, the characteristic equation. Let us now see how do we populate the remaining entries of this root array. So, this first entry of this R3, let us call it as A31 and this A31 can be calculated as the negative determinant of this system. So, the determinant of this system will be a n, a n minus 3 minus a n minus 1 a n minus 2. So, this R 3 is actually a negative determinant. So, it is a n minus 1 times a n minus 2 minus a n into a n minus 3. So, it is actually negative of this determinant divided by this entry a n minus 1. So, that is how we will define A31. Then we look at A32. It will be a similar procedure, but now the matrix uh, we will be focusing on will be this. So, it will be now A n minus 3 into A n minus 4 minus A n minus 2 A n minus 5 divided by A n minus 3. So, that is how all this third row will be populated and wherever let us say we reach this particular point in order to form this determinant we will have to consider these other entries to be 0. So, automatically this entry will also become 0. So, every time we finish two rows we will be reducing the number of columns which has non-zero entries. Then we look at row 4 
and all these subsequent calculations are very similar. Now, when we are calculating the first entry of R4, let us call it A41, that will be given by the corresponding negative determinant of this. So, it will be A31 times the small a n minus 3, A32 times a n minus 1 divided by a 3 1. So, these calculations will be repeated subsequently and we will keep on reducing number of zeros every two rows uh, one of the columns will become 0 and all the way we will return some value as r n or r m will be a m 1. After that, all the entries uh, below will become 0. So, that way progressively we can calculate uh, the root array and uh, in order to apply this condition of stability, what we will be doing is we will be focusing on this particular first column and if all the entries in this first column are positive, then the closed loop system is stable. If any of those entries is 0, then this particular method uh, fails or it is not able to assess whether the system is going to be stable or unstable. And if any of those entries is negative, then the system closed loop system will be unstable because one of the poles will be on the right half plane. So, let us now try to apply it to the 3 CSTR example. So, for which the characteristic equation was s cube plus 3 s square plus 3 s plus 1 plus k c over 8 equal to 0. So, the first row of the root array will be this coefficient which is 1 and then the alternate one which is 3 and there is nothing else after that and the second row will be starting with this 3 and then this 1 plus k c over 8. This is column 1, this is column 2. Now, before proceeding we did not uh, look at what is the Hurwitz uh, condition. So, for this particular system the Hurwitz condition says that all the coefficients should be greater than 0 uh, which means 1 plus k c over 8 should be greater than 0 and which is typically satisfied. as this is a reverse acting controller. So, k c greater than 0 is typically the value which we select. So, automatically 1 plus k c over 8 would always be greater than 0. Now, let us look at uh, how do we populate the remaining rows. So, let us say row 3 will be 3 times 3 which is 9 minus 1 plus k c over 8 divided by 3 uh, which comes out to be 8 minus k c over 8 divided by 3 and then the other entry will be just 0 and when we go to row 4 it will be this particular matrix 3 1 plus k c over 8 8 minus k c over 8 by 3 and 0. So, that last entry will become 1 plus k c over 8. So, uh, based on the roots array, the stability condition says that all the entries in this column should be greater than 0. So, this is automatically satisfied by the Hurwitz condition. So, the only additional condition which we are getting for this system is 8 minus k c over 8 should be greater than 0 which means k c should be less than 64. So, the stability condition on this particular system is that the controller gain if I am using a proportional controller should be less than 64. So, if you recall or if you go back in the video and previous video and see the plots for which I had shown you the responses, one was k c equal to 50 where we had decaying oscillations and one of the plots was for k c equal to 70 where the, we had the growing oscillation which was unstable. If you 
plot it for kc equal to 64 actually you will find that it is the stability limit uh, which at which you get the marginal stability so we'll take a short break here and uh, when we come back uh, we will look at other method of finding the stability limit uh, rather other than using this Ruth Hurwitz criteria. <laughs> 